While this presents an opportunity to expand and boost agricultural output, hence creating jobs in the sector, supply constraint, exacerbated demand, uh, uh, sorry, uh, CBN okay, Governor. Let him finish. I think what we did here was like we asked specific questions. Yes. And uh, as someone, no, no, sir, I object him, to let this. Him, let him, no, let him, let let him, him go back and answer the questions. The moment a senator interrupted the CBN Governor, Yemi Kadoso, because he was frustrated at the fact that he came to the Senate hearing with a prepared speech instead of answering to their individual questions. When you look at how these kind of hearings are conducted in other climes, in parliaments, in national assemblies, congresses like the US, it makes a mockery of how we operate. The central bank governor is a professional employed by the government. He was supposed to answer the questions posed by the senators, but he came there with a prepared speech. Who does that? In fact, later in the hearing, he asked the deputy governor of the central bank to answer some of the questions asked by the senators, just like Tinubu did at Chatham House in the UK during the campaigns. Everyone is feeling the heat in Nigeria. Even the senators know what is happening. Deep down in their hearts, they know that a lot is wrong with their policies. That was why the Senate Committee Chairman on Finance, Senator Sani Musa, asked him, quote, Will you convincingly tell Nigerians that this policy is working? More people are hungry, which means your policies are not working. Go and look at the number of Toyota vehicles. Do we manufacture Toyota vehicles? How much foreign exchange do we pay for Toyota vehicles? Do we have a policy that will make backward integration work? By making Toyota come back here and make an assembly plant that will serve Nigeria and sub-West African nations. There's no country that will allow such freelance in foreign exchange policy. When was the last time you heard in the UK, Saudi Arabia, even in some of the developing countries, where you allow your foreign exchange to skyrocket, it's not done. We are in a country where we have the best economists. Which local or foreign investor in Nigeria today will be very secure to invest in this country today? Unquote. The Senate Committee Chairman said a lot of things. He even queried the $3.3 billion collected as loan, what the central bank is doing with the money and how they plan to invest it. Why we are saying all this, quoting him verbatim, is to make people understand that what we analyze is not just out of nowhere. This is the reality in this country. People in authority know the truth. They know that many things are not working. Even their policies are not working. They are just doing trial and error. If they tell themselves the truth, they are supposed to do the right things. At least start with the top priorities. You cannot float what you don't have. This has to be hammered. It has been overflogged. It is when you have something in large quantity that you can say, let me open even many branches so that I can be selling them. Many people saying that their policy on paying Naira to people who received money, remittances through IMTOs, that it is the right thing to do. After all, dollars is not the legal tender in Nigeria. But they forget the fact that there is no other alternative Form A's, people who want to study abroad, if you fill that form, $10,000 that you need that money to pay for school fees, you might wait for 10 years. Do you know the backlog? Many people are not aware of what is happening in this country. Since January last year, the central bank has not paid many of the Form A requests from students and other individuals who want to study abroad. You cannot prevent people from studying abroad when your own educational sector is underwhelming. People should see this world as one huge market. Anywhere people can see the best in anything, whether it is commerce, schools, name it, technology, they will go there and pay for it. That's how it works. So make your own the best and the whole world will start coming here, just like the tourism sector. If your country is more accommodating, you have beautiful landscapes. People will come, provided there is security. If you know that you don't have dollars, enough foreign exchange to satisfy local demand, what do you do? If you can't go into production immediately, 
you have to make sure you provide incentives to attract dollars. Not do it the other way around by trying to stop people who are bringing the dollars from taking them over the counter in banks in dollars. People who create such strict measures are people who have enough. Let's stop pretending there is enough foreign exchange in Nigeria. Even if the banks are hoarding it, how much can they hoard? Can they hoard $100 billion? They cannot. So the ultimate priority should be what are they going to do in the short term to make sure there is sufficient foreign exchange to meet local demand. And they should at least fix the exchange rate. It has to be stable whether it is floated or not floated. If it is exchanging at 1,200 Naira, let it maintain around the same digit for several months. It's called stability and stability cultivates confidence. Once people are seeing that the exchange rate has been stable for some months, they will start having confidence in the system. That's the most important thing. That's how to drive the economy to prosperity. No one can plan when you can't even predict what will happen to the exchange rate the next minute. You can't predict the price of goods. You can't predict food inflation. Dollar, dollar, dollar. Are we going to dollarize the country? Now, let's hear what the former chief whip, Oji Zokalo, asked the central bank governor. Quote, What measures are you putting in place to strengthen the Naira? Because the manufacturing and agricultural sector have gone dead. How do you expect to generate foreign exchange when farmers are no longer going to farms? Headsmen have taken over. Are you going to print dollars? Unquote. This is another reality we always talk about. Even Peter B, his mantra during the campaigns was from consumption to production. If you are not producing anything, you are not exporting anything, how are you going to attract foreign exchange? So in simple terms, this is where they should have started before considering floating of the Naira. You cannot float Naira when you know you don't have foreign exchange to back it up. You start by production and when you start earning the dollars in large quantity and by that time, majority of the things we import, Nigerians would have started manufacturing them locally here. So many of the merchants who import them would have started sourcing them locally, thereby reducing the demand for dollars, including refineries. Maybe by that time, in two years' time, most of the refineries would have started refining at full capacity. So with all these in mind, it will mean that by that time, demand for dollars would have dropped by up to 80%. So by that time, if anyone says they are floating the Naira or auctioning anything, it will work because demand is already very low. All these issues of banning, banning, banning and stopping this and stopping that, these are half measures that people use to cover up inefficiencies. Just like when they said that the major reason they stopped petrol subsidy was because a few individuals were playing the system. They were stealing money through subsidy. If that is truly the reason they stopped subsidy, what is the job of the police and other security agencies? Why can't they do their job? Why should Nigerians pay because of their inefficiency? Simply, they cannot catch the people that are beating the system, that are benefiting from the petrol subsidy. So it doesn't make any sense for people to cover up their inefficiencies in such a way that it will hurt the economy and people will suffer for it. Thanks for watching.